If you've ever flown Southwest Airlines and made your reservations online, you'll know that you typically get three choices of airfare. First, there is the business select that it gives you all the bells and whistles to the extent Southwest does bells and whistles. <laughs> then there's the anytime fare, which is the basic fare and a couple of perks. And finally, there's the wanna get away fare, the basic, basic fare. No frills and low cost the reason people fly Southwest Airlines in the first place. Now, Southwest has marketed their entire brand around the wanna get away slogan. And they've made some pretty funny commercials about it. Typically, the commercials center on an individual who finds himself in an incredibly embarrassing or awkward situation when the voiceover says, wanna get away? So like there's one of a preoccupied businessman talking on his cell phone and getting into what he thinks is an Uber when in fact he's getting into the getaway car of a bank robbery. Wanna get away? Or there's another one in which a television crew is doing a live interview of a secret witness with the lights dimmed and his voice altered when a young intern walks into the room and flips on the light, exposing the secret witness. Want to get away? So in today's gospel, we hear a continuation of last week's gospel. If you remember from last week, Jesus had commissioned the 12 apostles to go out and to preach the good news, to cure the sick, and to cast out demons. Well, this scene occurs now immediately after they have come back from that episode. So St. Mark, who is at chapter 6, verse 30, tells us, The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all that they had done and taught. And he, Jesus said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. So it's understandable to think that Jesus is offering the apostles a break a chance to escape all of the hard work that they've just been through and just have some downtime. Now Mark tells us a little bit more that helps us understand maybe what Jesus' motivation is. Mark tells us the people were coming and going in great numbers and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a dirt deserted place. So apparently, Jesus really just wants to sit down and talk with his disciples, probably to debrief them over what they have been doing. And as we know from Jesus, he likes to do things over a meal. And apparently, there's just so many people and so much activity that they can't even sit down and have a meal. So this is what's motivating Jesus to say, let's get away to a deserted place so that we can spend some time together. Well, they no sooner decide to do that, and St. Mark tells us, people saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. So they hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm trying to get away from a crowd and I find out that they have beaten me to where I'm going and there they are when I arrive, I'm not going to be all that happy about it. After all, 
That's who I'm trying to escape from. But actually, St. Mark tells us that's not at all Jesus' response when he sees the crowd. Mark tells us, when Jesus disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them. Jesus isn't at all annoyed. He is moved with pity. Now, a word on translation here. Our version says that his heart was moved with pity for them. And that's because in our culture, we associate our emotions with the heart. So the translator chooses to say that Jesus' heart was moved with pity. But if you actually read the Greek, the literal meaning of the Greek is that Jesus is moved with pity in his guts. Now, part of that is because in the ancient world, they associated emotions with the gut, not with the heart. And, and we still have some vestiges of that, right? When we say, I just have a gut feeling this isn't going right, okay? Well, that's where the ancient world located their uh, emotions. And so what the Greek says is that when Jesus sees the crowd, he's moved with pity to his very core being. He's moved to his guts with pity. This is true and real compassion. In English, we might say it's the difference between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is when we can intellectually identify with someone's emotions, and so we feel for them that way. But it's more out of our intellect that we are sympathizing with them. Empathy is a deeper emotion that we experience. We actually begin to share the other's emotion, maybe because we ourselves have had that experience or because we are very sensitive to the emotions of others. And so if you use that dichotomy, Jesus is clearly empathizing with the crowd here. Now notice, however, what the need of this crowd is. It is not a need for healing or for preaching or for casting out demons, which Jesus had just sent the apostles out to do. No, Jesus is moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. These are folks who need someone to care about them and to care for them. And that's what Jesus can bring to them. Jesus will be the shepherd for these people just by being there present to them, caring for them and having compassion for them. And because Jesus realizes this is what their need is, because Jesus is truly moved to the core of his being, he doesn't try to get away. Mark tells us he begins to teach them many things. Now, I don't know about all of you, but after this week, I sure feel like I want to get away. The death of seven-year-old Taylor Hayes on Thursday, just two weeks after she was shot a couple of blocks up the street, has really hit our community hard. The escalating violence in our city is bad enough, but how do you wrap your mind around the death of an innocent child? playing with her girlfriend in the back of a car. Many in the neighborhood gathered Friday evening for a vigil and rally in memory of Taylor 
and in support of her family. And it was a wonderful opportunity for us to gather, to be with each other, to console each other, and also, though, to bring hope for our neighborhood. And, you know, we could add to all of that all of the other troubling news in the larger world, from Donald Trump's mind-boggling meeting with Vladimir Putin to Congress's dysfunction in responding to it, to the divisions within our nation based on racism and bigotry and a politics of hatred. Our civil society just isn't very civil anymore. And none of that even takes into consideration the personal struggles that many of us are dealing with in any given time. Want to get away? You know, but sometimes when <clears throat> we feel that way and we listen to a gospel like today's, <clears throat> we conclude that there must be times when even Jesus himself wants to get away. He says, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. But when the crowds beat Jesus to that deserted place so that he can't get away, he doesn't run off to find another deserted place. No, the first thing Jesus does is to feel compassion for the crowd down to the core of his being. The first thing Jesus does is care. And while that doesn't sound like much in light of the problems we face today, it's a huge starting point. Because I think that one of the main crises we face today is whether people really care anymore. When guns become the means of resolving disputes, when hate becomes the response to people of color or different sexual orientation, when children are separated from their families and immigrants are treated callously by our government, we have to ask ourselves, does anyone really care anymore? Knowing that someone cares is the first step toward healing. And then recognizing what people need is the next step. Jesus saw what the people needed. They needed a shepherd. They needed to know that someone cared for them and was willing to be with them. Because the worst thing for anyone in pain is to feel abandoned. In North America, when someone loses a loved one to death, we typically say to them, I'm sorry for your loss. But in parts of Latin America, when someone dies, people say, te acompaño, which literally means, I accompany you. And what more powerful words can we speak to someone in pain than, I will be with you? That is what a shepherd does. And that is what sheep without a shepherd need. We need someone to accompany us. We need Jesus Christ, and Jesus will never abandon us. There are lots of things in life that might, might, might make us want to get away, and we have lots of good reasons to feel that way. And for as long as we feel that way, we'll have Southwest Airlines ready to sell us a ticket. But for as much as we might feel like getting away in life, we have to remember that Jesus never feels that way. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is moved to the depths of his being in the problems we face. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, sees our problems and knows what we need. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, accompanies us in all of life's journey, no matter where that journey may take us. So want to get away? Not Jesus. Amen.